Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Not long now. We've got three heavyweight fights to look forward to on the Dillian White and Joseph Parker card at the O2 in London, including the big one between the two guys I just mentioned. In this video, I'll run through my final thoughts on the White Parker fight, Takam versus Chisora and Allen versus Webb, including the numbers that we've seen the way in and what it potentially may mean for the main event. Because I think, yeah, Dillian White coming in bigger potentially is a good thing for Joseph Parker. And I must have done about 10 videos or so in the past few weeks covering the multiple and various angles for that fight in the broader card. So if you want to get your fill of various angles, various things that have been said and happened, check out the Joseph Parker playlist or the Brits playlist to get your fill. But let's get into it. Buckle in. Let's go. Let's start with the big one first. Joseph Parker, he did tell us a few days ago he was going to come in about six pounds heavier for this fight. And he did, weighing 242 pounds. He looked in pretty decent shape and possibly he was a bit bulkier up top with a bit more muscle, maybe a bit more fat there too. He told us earlier in the week that he didn't really know if it was extra muscle or fat, but that he did feel good and he didn't need to focus on weight loss in his training camp. And part of me actually thinks that there was a deliberate strategy in play here where they didn't necessarily want him to come in as light against White than he did for the Joshua fight. So they were expecting you know, to still have a decisive speed and movement advantage over White in spite of a few more pounds here. And let's not forget that Parker's body is likely to be hit repeatedly with stinging body shots. So having a bit more muscle and padding in general it might be able to help absorb some of that punishment. Because it is coming. You know Dillian White is going to throw to the body. And Dillian White himself, he surprisingly, well surprisingly to me at least, weighed in heavier than expected, tipping the scales at a shade under 259 pounds. So that's more than a stone heavier than Parker. But far from looking out of shape, he looked in what I would describe as sort of a stocky fit. He looked, you know, very compact, he looked in pretty decent condition, and you wouldn't say that he looked out of shape. He's clearly, from what I could see, put on a little bit more mass in the upper body, and this was something that I was commenting on in the last couple of days. And that may be to help him absorb anything coming his way from Parker, but more likely, he wants to try deliver that knockout punch, that one hit a quitter. And it's going to have to be a good one if it is going to knock Parker down or stop him. But given his trainer, Mark Tibbs, had declared a few days ago that he thought White would come in closer to 250. He thought he'd weigh 4 or 5 pounds less than the 254 pounds that he did for Lucas Brown. It was a little bit of a surprise to see him weigh closer to 260. If you have been following my coverage of this fight, you'll know that I've been predicting that I think this fight goes the distance and or likely goes the distance and that Parker using his speed movement and taking advantages of mistakes and countering opportunities he's likely to ride that to a decision win. The way in it has only solidified my thinking in this regard and if Parker's activity is steady for the majority of the fight if he is you know really making Dillian White work he may be able to tire White out in those later rounds or have him tiring and very tired in those later rounds and rack up some good rounds behind his boxing because he is a very good boxer. White, meanwhile, if you've seen my Keys to Victory video, he needs to be efficient. He needs to be accurate with his work because if he's not, he could be swinging wildly and missing a lot. Joseph Parker has good defense and if White is throwing everything into his work, getting off balance, he could end up being tagged with some easy counters, eating a lot of unnecessary shots. And if he does hope to break Parker down, to slow him down, he needs to work Parker's body, early and often, and attempt to slow that movement down. Because if he can do that, he's going to have more success in the fight. He wants Parker to stand in front of him, to not be so elusive. And if he is standing in front of him for prolonged periods he can get some of his best work, some of his harder shots away. 
But for me, Parker will, for the most part, well, he should be able to avoid White's best work. And if anything, if there is a stoppage, I see it coming from Joseph Parker, stopping White later on in the fight. And I've really been warming up to that result, but I'm still leaning towards a Parker win on points. But if he does win on points, well, he better make sure he's leaving no room for doubt of who's winning the rounds because he can't just afford to eat them out. And he can't afford to sacrifice many of the early rounds either because that will only build pressure on him to perform better and be more aggressive later in the fight. He needs to start winning rounds early and banking them up. I am expecting a tough fight, one that likely starts slowly and builds into more action through the mid-rounds, and whoever's behind in the cards is likely to step it up later in the fight. Well, we might see that anyway, depending on how close it is. But let's hope it's a very good fight. Good luck to both men. And if White wins, I know I'm not picking him to win, but if he does win, it won't surprise me either. And I would see him winning on points rather than a knockout if he does win. But I'm ready to eat my hat if he does knock Joseph Parker out. Because Parker, he's never been dropped. He's never really been badly rocked. And he's never been stopped. So if Dillian White can do that, that is a major achievement. Moving on. Next. Carlos Takam versus Derek Chisora. It's a fight where I think many of us are hoping that the best version of Derek Chisora shows up. Because if he does, it could end up being a very good fight. A very competitive fight. Both guys, from the look of the final weigh-in, look ready. With a ripped, as always, Carlos de Calm weighing in at about 246 pounds. And Derek Chisora weighing in just under 250. I don't actually expect to see a phone booth style fight a la the White Chisora fight in 2016. But I expect to Calm to be mixing it up on the inside. I think they'll be trading at times, but I don't think it's going to be exclusively a phone booth style fight. I'm pretty confident that Takam's been watching some film of the Chisora Kabayal fight, which was in late 2017, where Kabayal really outboxed and outfoxed Chisora uh, largely on the back of movement. And if Takam is moving well, it could cause some headaches for Del Boy. And he didn't deal with it very well against Kabayal. And we did see that Takam's movement against Anthony Joshua, it was pretty good. It was relatively effective. So I'm expecting him to be somewhat elusive, especially early on, and I, I think he will look to frustrate Chisora, and he'll sort of snipe in and out, you know, a little bit of inside work, but I don't think we'll see him just trading right from the get-go. I am hopeful that this fight is going to be action-packed, because that's going to make the card even better, but I am also half expecting it to fall a little bit short of expectations, and that to come, he'll end up taking it on points, but, you know, who knows? Maybe Takam will look to go for broke. He is looking for, a, you know, a good performance, and he is overdue a good performance. But I am picking him to win on points, so we'll have to see where this goes. We do actually say of Chisora that heading into most of his fights these days that it, it could potentially be last chance saloon at the top level. But I guess that's going to depend for this fight, you know, how he actually goes, how he shapes up, how he fights. Because if it's a cracking performance, even in a loss, he'll keep finding some interesting fights, some interesting work on some Eddie Hearn undercards. Because he is a character, just much like Dillian White, he sort of adds a bit of value. And, you know, he's got a decent sort of, you know, fans quite like Derek Chisora. But say if he's dominated, he looks dreadful, well, he could be on the outside looking in. So I don't think there's any shortage of motivation here for Derek Delboy Chisora. And the other heavyweight fight that we do have on the card here was a late edition, Nick Webb versus Dave Allen. So in Webb, we have a 12-0 guy, a big puncher, and he really needs a breakout performance, given his profile is basically in the gutter. It couldn't be really any lower. So this is a perfect opportunity, a lot of eyeballs on this fight, for the 30-year-old to look good, make a statement, and build some momentum. And this fight, it's been confirmed as a British title eliminator, so that's an added incentive for him to do well. And in Dave Allen, I'm not really expecting much. We've got a tough and durable guy. He doesn't really seem to be too interested in boxing these days, and he's talking about retirement. I don't expect him to win, but I do hope that he at least puts up a good performance. He tries to make it interesting. He actually lets his hands go in this one. 
In reality, though, I mean, Webb, he weighed in just over 260 pounds. He's likely to be peppering Allen for much of the contest, and he should get the win. I hope Dave Allen just doesn't get hurt in this one. Be good to see him walk away from the sport if, in fact, he does do that with his health intact. And just before I go, the other fight that I'm interested in watching on this card, not a heavyweight scrap, but it's the Conor Ben vs. Cedric Payanote scrap which is, of course, it's a rematch. And that's only happening because the French journeyman, that's what he is, he knocked Ben down in their first fight. And that left a lot of us questioning, well, how good is Conor Ben? How far can he go if he's getting, you know, flat on his backside by low-level journeyman? So, it's, you know, it's all there to prove for Ben. What are you expecting of the card overall? Who are you picking? Is Dillian White going to win? Is Joseph Parker going to win? Is Carlos Takam going to win? Derek Chisora. Who do you think is going to win and how? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.